Mày trần gái con Trần được không? Trần được Có chết thật mày ấy Vâng <cười> Em học từ hôm qua đấy Không làm bài không biết làm Bởi vì lúc nghe lúc không tôi phải đi mò <cười> Thế mà cũng được 10 điểm <cười> Tí nữa sẽ biết quả luôn chị ạ Đáng nghe là cô Trang ở xuống đây Cô Trang ngồi trên phòng Cô Trang ngồi trên phòng Thế làm sao tập trung học Thì có phải làm <cười> Hôm qua là định xuống rồi, thế xong rồi bị chung gọi lại làm công văn thế là lại phải ở lại. Bây giờ đang chờ để làm báo cáo nốt để còn gửi đã không mới đi được. Đấy, <cười> okay, uh, good morning everyone. Good morning Mr. Durant. I think that we have sufficient enough numbers. I think some people are running late today but it's okay. They will join in a little bit later. So, yes, whenever you feel ready, um, we are ready as well. Okay. Excellent. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good, good to see you back. Uh, good morning, um, sir. How do you do? Okay. Uh, I see still a few people joining, but um, yeah, we'll press on. Um, so I'll. Um, what I was going to do is uh, share my screen first, and we'll just quickly go over what we covered um, yesterday just to remind you where we got to um and also then uh we talked about uh, a quiz yes um and so perhaps we'll go through the answers to this quiz a quiz um and then yesterday i also had a request to show examples of real risk assessments aviation sector so i've gather together some examples which we can work through and if people have questions ask questions about them uh, and then we have um, a, a practice session of building or uh, identifying some risks um, and I understand we can break up into groups to do that um, and then we'll move on to the next part of the course okay Same as yesterday, if anyone's got any questions, please stop me. If you can't follow what I'm saying, please stop me uh, and ask me to repeat. Um, if I'm speaking too quickly, please tell me. Um, and that way everyone can get the most they can out of the course. Okay. Uh, okay. It's not full screen yet. It's not full screen? No, not yet. Is that not right? No? Uh, no, not full screen. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it shows that you did not click the full screen button. No, you didn't click it. Yeah, oh, right. yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll try again. No. No. You share the okay. screen. Uh, can you click on the slideshows button up there, and you, you will see on the top. You will see the full screen button. Uh, sorry, I, I'm not meaning to show the full presentation. I want to show the slides that we used yesterday as well. Okay. Okay. Yes. Then that's fine. We can see your screen. Okay. Here. Okay. Great. Okay, so you can see slides and I can slide them up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Um, so the course we're doing is advanced risk management. Okay. Um, so um, firstly, we talked about what the objective of the course was. 
to develop a good working level understanding of general risk management as applicable to all parts of a complex business and to form a foundation for the development of expertise within the group. Um, the agenda was firstly to cover the fundamentals of risk and risk management, and then move to the principles and the theory and building up the knowledge so we can start practicing applying the process in an airline and assessing risks. I very briefly talked about, very briefly talked about the history of um, risk and risk management. And I mentioned this book and I mentioned the Greeks. Uh, then we talked about the definition of risk. And later on, I mentioned that you may be better buying the French version. <laughs> and this is one example, actually, which I didn't mention yesterday. The French definition is the effect of uncertainty on achieving objectives, which is more correct. It's the uncertainty of achieving your objectives. Uh, so this English version is not quite as good. Um, we talked about how important understanding your objectives is because without understanding your objectives, you cannot really identify risk and then assess risk because risk is about not meeting your objectives. We talked about uncertainty and that we're trying to predict the future, but we can't really predict the future. So there is uncertainty about our work, but we must learn from the past to reduce and do research to reduce the uncertainty. I gave an example of a project uh, from, um, from Air New Zealand, and we took, took guesses at what the objective might have been defined as. And we had some very close, close guesses. Um, and I talked about this very simple objective and everything was measured in terms of risk about whether it would change, affect the objective. We then briefly talked about um, what the objective of an airline is in very high level terms. And then about the customer journey and now each part of the organization has slightly different objectives in delivering to the main objective. I then introduce you to the international standard, ISO 31000, and explained that it is the, meant to be the top document and that there are other risk standards that fall below it, such as analysis and IT security, 27,000, I think that one is. I then explained that the standard is quite simple and it can be explained in one diagram. Uh, a diagram that consists of three circles. Uh, the first circle gives us the principles of effective risk management. What are the principles that make a risk management effective. Firstly, but it's about value creation and protection. And then we went through eight further principles that it's integrated into this organization that is customized, that is dynamic. It must move with the organization and it takes factors into account such as human cultural factors. Um, so we went through all of these. And then I talked briefly about applying the principles in practice before moving on to introducing a risk framework to make this risk assessment work and to make it undertaken correctly within an organization, you need commitment and leadership to do it well and to understand how to build it into the way you do business. So we talked a little bit about that uh, before then moving into the, the, heart, the working level of risk management, which is the risk management process. 
and I stepped through that we need to understand the scope of our work, the context in which risk occurs, and any criteria that might apply, whether they're legal criteria or internal criteria, industry criteria, et cetera. Before then, stepping through the risk assessment process itself. So I'll use this diagram, it's easier. How we have to identify risk, and that's really important because if you don't identify a risk, you cannot possibly manage it. How you analyze or try and understand the risk, what causes it, how bad it is, are there any opportunities associated with it? What are the factors that influence the risk? Before then, evaluating if the risk meets your criteria or not. And then how to treat the risk or mitigate the risk if you want to reduce the risk. And along the way, I mentioned that it's important to consult and communicate as part, particularly as part of a research and evaluation steps. But you must record and report on what you've done. And if reported, we need a, a common way of reporting, a consistent way of reporting. And that you should monitor the effectiveness of your process and review. Do we need to update it, for example? Have we missed something? Constantly asking the question. And in practice, this can be a evolving process an iterative process, taking steps, you learn a piece, you go back, uh, maybe we've missed something, uh, we've forgotten about this, let's review it. I briefly explained that the um, safety and quality policy of the company uh, particularly says here that uh, you must proactively manage changes, identify hazards, and manage safety risks in operation, maintenance, and training activities, analyze and eliminate or reduce the associated risks. So that's exactly that's saying you must do this. Um, and that's basically follow that process. Uh, but you can do it in any, not just safety, in any department, there are risks to the department's objectives and the company's objectives, and you step through a, exactly the same process, albeit it may be slightly simpler than in safety and technical fields, but the principles are exactly the same. I then mentioned another international risk management standard, 31,010, which is about analysis and explain that you can do analysis qualitatively using terminology, phrases, judgment. You can use a semi-quantitative approach, which is you start to use some numbers to help you rank risks, but carefully recognizing that the numbers are only a guide, a help, or in some more complex cases, particularly where you've got a lot of data, but um, you can carry out quantitative analysis. But it's normally done by people trained to do quantitative risk analysis or statistical methods. I gave some examples of a very simple matrix using simply term terms, so a qu qualitative matrix. I gave an example of a semi-quantitative analysis, which is using numbers to give some sense of what's more important than another. And a quantitative analysis, which uses real numbers or numbers that represent reality in terms of likelihood and consequence. And we had scales for consequence and scales for probability I then explained that mathematically risk is likelihood times consequence. Um, easy to say, but easy to get wrong. Uh, but that is the foundation for the matrix that we use. 
a matrix is like a simple way of doing it. I was very, in a very timely way, I was asked a question about more common risks versus uh, less common risks. And so I explained this diagram that you can have risks occurring quite frequently that have low consequence, but the same hazard, the same cause of risk can create, whoops, beg your pardon, um, worse outcomes, sometimes called the worst case, but we expect them to be less frequent. So you may want to represent one risk in two different ways. One risk is the most common likely outcome and another description of the same hazard that gives a worst case outcome. And I explained that some industries, mining in particular, will, will follow this process. Okay. Then I introduced you to what a consequence scale may look like, a very, very high level one of sort of a group consequence scale and explain that the financial outcome, it needs to be scaled to the size of the organization. But this level has to represent the worst case. And also because when we are aviation business and airlines, aside from financial, there's also safety is paramount. And so the scale for safety also has to span from what we perceived to be the worst case, for example, losing an aircraft through to some lesser um, safety outcome. And we have a little, we had a little bit of debate and discussion on that. Okay. Um, I've been briefly talked about likelihood and we can use different terms but we have to agree what terms we're going to use. Uh, and I gave this example, which maybe I should have um, not shown two because I was correctly asked why two. And I had to explain it was a complexity of the English language. Uh, and perhaps you should be reading the French version of a standard, but we're joking too much. Um, you need to agree what term means what frequency, however you choose to show it. I then introduced you to a matrix where, or a typical matrix, one that shows likelihood and consequence using terms, so a qualitative, approach and explain that um, these may be weighted towards a likelihood you don't think one thing is happening frequently or maybe weighted towards consequence you don't like bad things happening regardless of how rare they may be or you may use a balanced simpler balanced approach and comment was made uh, that in an airline, an aversion to risk, um, a fear of a worst case, worst case can be so bad, but maybe the rating should be weighted to avoid consequences, to rate consequences higher. And so this is a matrix that shows that. And then I explained that there is a there can be a quite simple way of deciding that if you have a risk, you have to report it. And so you can split up your risk your risk matrix and say, right, any risk that falls into this area must be reported to a senior level, this area to a mid level, and perhaps at this level can be retained within the department and not reported. But I also explained the problem with that is that sometimes you have a collection of risks that don't get reported, but together they represent quite high risk. And so you have to use professional judgment at times to say, well, actually we're getting a bit concerned with how many risks we have. 
So we should re be reporting that even if they don't meet the criteria for reporting. And I mentioned an example of a state-owned enterprise here in New Zealand that had gone bankrupt for exactly that reason. They had not been reporting a series of risks uh, that together represented a significant threat to the organization. Um, and then I briefly explained the layout of a simple risk register. And I said, this is a very simple version. Um, then went through and just reminded, uh, we talked again about objectives and I put up your own objectives as they expressed as vision and mission and targets and the like. And that's about where we finished. Um, before then, stepping through 10 questions to see how well people had been, or how well I had been explaining myself. As a, <laughs> um, okay, so I think now would be quite a good time to see how people got on in the quiz. Um, before we, or before then, I'll show you examples of real risk registers from the aviation sector, as I was asked to yesterday. I've collected about eight examples, which I think will be useful for people to see what this looks like for real, um, before we then break down into groups to do an exercise of identifying risk. Okay, that sounds good. good. Now I have my screen, so yes, uh, you'll be able to see this. One second. Okay, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here is the answers um, for question number one, if everyone can see. So the question is quite simple. Please complete the following sentence. Risk is defined as the effect of uncertainty on and objectives, 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 objectives. So yes, yeah, most everyone. Very good. Yeah, okay, question two. Uh, yes, so 80% chose 31,000 for which international global standards for risk management? I think, yes, yeah, so that's pretty high. Okay, I think most people understand that. Number three. Which one of the following is not a step in the risk? management process and the the answer is risk seeking which is 72 percent is that the correct one mr duran uh that's correct yes risk seeking is not mentioned sorry can we just go go back um to question two yes uh, now it looks like that for one uh, participant had the wrong answer however <laughs> ISO 27000 by chance is the IT security risk management standard. So strictly uh, speaking, that is also a risk standard. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So okay. someone's uh, someone's someone's uh, quite right. <laughs> okay, so 27 is also okay. I, I I wouldn't fault someone for putting that down. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So number three, we finished. Number four. Uh, okay, so number four, there is some quite a few different answers. What are the two axes typically shown on um, risk metrics? Probability n. So some said balance. So uh, we'll see. Uh, consequence, mm -hmm. likelihood, consequences, consequence. So most is consequence and severity. <coughs> Impact, consequence, consequences, likelihood, severity. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, impact and severity could reasonably said be said to be correct. Okay. As well as consequence. Okay. Yes. Yes. So probably some 
still mistaken between the likelihood and probability. So because there's mm, some yeah, and that, that I apologize. It's probably my fault because yeah. I gave that example of uh, which is really a a problem with the English language. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So probably that. Okay. Number five. Okay. Number five. We have quite a few answers. Why are we interested in objectives when discussing risk management? Because we must set an objective to find ways to quantify and measure those risks, create methods to monitor risk, and finally come up with treatment methods which mitigate or eliminate risk. First answer because we must identify the objective and then we define the risk. That second answer is. is very good very succinct very short simple correct answer yes okay proactively manage changes identify hazards and manage safety risk in operation maintenance and training activities analyze and eliminate or reduce associated risk so that explains what risk management is about but not really why we have to identify hazard uh, objectives Okay, as you know that when something happens, it will negatively or positively affect to any department. Based on this, we find solutions to prevent <coughs> and reduce risk. Okay. Yeah. Um, next one is to focus on core value of business, give priority to main factors and create safety culture. Uh, next one, because objectives are fundamentals of risk. Very good, very good answer. Next, we can apply different level of risk on different objectives. That's not quite correct. It's not quite. Okay. Yeah. Next one, encouragement for companies to think about threats, to be prepared about threats, also to be better on organizations. It's close, but not, not quite bad, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Those. Because we must have objects in order for us to know what factors will affect the achievement of those objects. I mean, I mean objectives. From there, we can identify the risk to manage them. Mm -hmm. Next one, because objectives consist of different aspects, such as objectives in safety, security, environment, and finance, which could be applied in many levels, including strategy, projects, product services, or procedures. Yeah, that is correct what's written, but I perhaps doesn't quite get to the answer of a question. Mm. Okay. Yep. Because of its uncertainty. Okay, I'll, I'm going to come back. Uh, if I may, once we finish through these, I'll just explain a few things, actually. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, in accordance with safety quality policy. Because risk is the effect of uncertainty on objectives. Straight out of the textbook, that one. <laughs> <laughs> because objectives is a thing which which we concern, and this thing is affected by something positive and or negative, and we need to know more, more different aspects to meet, mitigate risk to this thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, identify the objectives have I uh, help define risk for each department. Mm -hmm. The first thing we need to be in compliance with regulations and apl applicable standards and in addition to consider the balance between safety issues and economic efficiencies okay mm -hmm. for the last few to figure out the specific goal objective of the company or department that risk might be identified measured and <clears throat> controlled mm -hmm. good um, develop a good working level and uh, work, working uh, Good working level understanding of, of risk of management. Risk management. I okay. Risk management. I think that's it. That's all the answer. Okay. If I could, I'll just uh, ask, I'll just make a few comments here. Okay. Um, there is often confusion we find with what is meant by the objective, what objective. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people read it as the objective of a risk management process which is not correct. That's not how we are trying to use the word. 
clearly the risk management process has an objective. It's to identify and manage risk. But the objective that we're particularly interested in defining is the objective of the organization or the department, because that is what we are measuring. We are interested in the risk to those objectives, the probability of the possibility of not meeting the organizational objectives. So there is sometimes that confusion exactly what objective we're talking about. Um, and quite a few textbooks don't explain it very well. Mm. Yep. But a lot of good answers there. Yep, very good. Um, one looks like someone wrote the textbook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, number six. What is the first step of risk assessment process? So 44% is identify risk, 32% is establish the context, and then one or just 4% is mm. treat. Okay. I, I feel I it was not a good question to ask, actually. Um, because a risk assessment process, strictly speaking, starts with, is just the middle of the overall process and it's identify risk is strictly correct. But the first step of a risk management activity is establish a context. So I wouldn't fault anyone for writing either of those. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So just a wording yeah. of the question. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. A và B đều được. A và B thực ra là tôi gặp hai cái nội dung mà đang bị trùng nhau thì thầy bảo là nếu mà mình nói về quy trình thì là cái câu A là đúng nhất nhưng mà khi mà mình nói về quản lý rủi ro thì cái câu B lại đúng hơn. Tức là cái hai cái đó nghĩa là câu hỏi của thầy nó đang chưa đúng sát ý lắm nên là thầy bảo là nếu mà bạn đặt A từ mà B cũng không sao. Ok, number 7, the ICAO risk matrix uses three terms. Which is a which of the following term is not used? And 72% said, okay. <laughs> I think that's a good guess. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Number eight. Okay, so this is where you are interested in. Um, so which of which do you consider the most important risk that your department must consider during the recovery from the COVID pandemic? So the first one, the first answer is passengers or employee psychology. Okay. That's a really interesting one. And I think, yeah, very interesting. Um, as a hazard, the first step in identifying risk, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Next one for me, I consider the most important risk during the recovery from COVID pandemic. The pilot do not fly continuously. The <laughs> operator may be has many occurrences in flight operation so yeah currency yeah okay. i think everyone is or a lot of people are worried about that one yep mm. next training activities could be interrupted because of covid infected infrastructure <clears throat> and trainings customers attend a flight training center or they are infected from any covid infected habit <clears throat> Yeah, so okay. Mm -hmm. COVID itself is the hazard. Mm -hmm. I think that we cannot provide good aircraft parts in time to fix defects when aircraft has many defects. Okay. A supply chain problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The sudden change of lockdown policy in some regions or nations. Mm -hmm. It um, has just been a study in APEC on that very problem. The APEC meeting okay. talked about that. Mm -hmm. yes. The cabin crew department may face a risk of personal personnel shortage. We may not have enough flight attendants for the flight rooms, as many of them have quit the job during the pandemic. So can I just ask um, if the, um, is there an expectation of a surge of demand for flights? Anyone want to comment on that? Are people expecting a big demand for, for flying? A surge? It has, uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Thầy vừa hỏi là mọi người có nghĩa là sẽ thời gian, trong thời gian ngắn tới thì sẽ có một cái kiểu là 
um, gọi là tìm là cái 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 nhu cầu à cái nhu cầu ạ à, nhu cầu bay sẽ sớm quay trở lại không ạ đang cao lắm rồi đang cao lắm ạ <cười> thì đấy thầy mình kiếm năm mươi thôi có ai muốn trả lời không ạ à, Vâng, bên đoàn bay kia ạ <cười> Mình là khách hàng, cứ tương tác mà Vâng, mình đang cứ tương tác thôi Em <cười> tin the demand is always high But in this time people fear to fly Because of the risk of the pandemic Right after the, the pandemic is uh, stable I use the word stable because I don't think um, the academic will be will be will be disappear. Mm. It will be uh, it will be the uh, us uh, for a long time. So when the academic is stable, the passenger the passenger will be so up again. And the demand always high. <laughs> it's never enough. Uh. Uh, Mr. Joran, did you hear that? No, sorry, that microphone, I'm not hearing particularly well. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. okay. So what uh, he said in the main room is that the demand is always high. Uh, just because of the COVID pandemic, then people are fear, uh, we are fearful to fly. But mm -hmm. right after the pandemic, uh, the number will be more stable. The demand will mm. come back again. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, it's, uh, I've, I'm doing some work for Pacific uh, Aviation Safety Organization, PASO, and there's a debate of whether there'll be a, a pent-up demand. Uh, a lot of people are wanting to fly on holidays to the Pacific Islands, and so it'll be a peak in demand even uh, after the pandemic. So yeah. that's why I asked that question. Thank you. Okay, so I'll continue. Um, human resources when operator turn back to normal recency training. Mm -hmm. Okay, staff recency. Mm -hmm. The risk of employees not adapting to work pressure when workload increases. Very interesting. Uh, I've just had a conversation with air traffic control manager here and he, that's his big concern mm. that they have been working but they haven't been working busy mm. on a high workload mm, interesting i am working in the safety quality department for an aviation cargo company in my opinion i think the most important risk that we must consider during the recovery from the covid pandemic is employee motivation <clears throat> after a long time of social distancing and having to work from home Many employees found that they are going to lose their motivation in working. Some employees decided to quit their job and find another job to refresh themselves. Therefore, we need to think about this risk because if our staff lose passion in their job, this can lead to human errors while operating the lack of manpower, as well as serious affect, uh, as well as seriously affect our service quality. That's really interesting one, that one, isn't it? Hmm. Yes, the motivation. Mm. Lacking human resource. Mm -hmm. Implement sufficient control measures to reduce risk to an acceptable level. Okay. The labor forgets the process to work because of long yeah. break. <laughs> oh, and see. Mm -hmm. um, the most important risk is still COVID 19 because it's almost a effect to our health staff, um, to our continuing services, to the flight safety. Right. Um, procedures change and human factor. Mm -hmm. Human factor. Mm -hmm. Uncertainty of the demand forecast. Interesting. Yeah, that's about a surge. If there will there ever be a surge, or will people be too frightened to fly? Mm -hmm. Yep. Risk evaluation. Okay, interesting. Yes, okay. Next one, and then we have next. Do you want to have any comment on this, or should I um, I think it would be interesting if that has 
generated any debate. Would anyone like to comment on some else's risks? Actually, we have another we have another answer on another page. Let me read. There is still few more answers here. Okay, I'll read for you some few more. Forget the procedures and especially issues relating safety, safety and security. Mm -hmm. The, the problem the problem is not only forget but we create so many new procedures okay uh, especially when we uh, change the fleet from the passenger fleet into the cargo fleet uh, that's a big problem hmm. are you actually refitting the aircraft or we uh, reconfigure the aircraft in order to take more cargo mm -hmm. in the cabin. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we need so many new procedures uh, and uh, human factor in this era. Uh, in fact, is uh, we have a uh, half to 70% of personnel uh, should be take a vacation, uh, a leave, uh, a forced leave, I think so. Uh, so many of our procedures uh, have not know clearly about the new procedures. And uh, the more thing that uh, certificate is a run out of time. So we need more training, but the pandemic uh, sees our training uh, activities. So a lot of things should be do. So procedures, not only the forget, but also the news. That's a big problem. Mm. I think so. That's a really interesting point. Um, it, it's it touches on a lot of people have raised about currency, but this is another dimension to that, isn't it? It's not only currency in what you used to do, but currency in what you should now be doing. The procedure should now be following. And how do you train up people quickly enough and sufficiently? Hmm, really interesting one, that one. Thank you. Yeah. It seems like uh, I, I figured just from my other conversations with other airlines and the like, but people are starting to worry about this and starting to realize that it's, it's quite a, a big piece of work to recover safely. Hmm. It, it deserves a proper risk assessment, doesn't it? Hmm. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Okay, I will continue to read this a few more. Um, safety issues. Okay, that's mm -hmm. the one. Workforce reductions worsen long term labor crisis. That's a labor shortage. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, next one the most important risk is the lack of passengers. Because after the pandemic, they don't have so much money to buy tickets. They maybe choose another cheaper airlines instead of Vietnam Airlines. At that time, Vietnam Airlines will have a lot of revenue reducing. Then our passenger sales department will not meet the KPI or the goal. And Vietnam Airlines also will have no money for operation. So uh, commercial risk. Mm. Yes, commercial risk. I think that when we cannot provide good spare parts in time to prepare defects on aircraft, Supply chain. Um, lack of supply for the air cargo business because it continues to maintain a high growth rate. Next one, but, okay. pilot operating skills and compliance are affected by the operating interruption. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all for question eight. Everyone answered. <clears throat> That's a, that's a really interesting mix of ideas there, and I think most of them are very valid, aren't they? Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay, so we will move on into the last two. Uh, number nine, uh, which combination of probability and consequence results in the highest risk? And yes, um, major and likely is the most answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last one, um, which of the following risk refers to risk after maturation have been applied. And 68% uh, residual <coughs> risk. And only 
Four percent choose raw risk. Hmm. So um, almost everyone got that one right. Yeah, but raw risk is incorrect. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Raw risk is the before mitigation. Right. So the correct answer is C, right? C. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Okay. So that's all for the ten questions, I think. Yeah. Very good. Okay, well, it seems like um, most people are, are pick, picking up uh, the right answers. Uh, just a few few that missed the answers on a couple of questions. But overall, I think it was a very good result, isn't it? Okay. Um, uh, any, anyone want to comment on the questions and answers? And does it raise any other questions? No. Nope. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, so now um, I was asked to provide some examples of uh, risk analysis. Um, and so I've, like I said, I've collected some together. Uh, some are quite simple. Some are quite complex. Almost all of them are from the aviation sector. Just one isn't. Um, and I'll explain why. So if I go through them and just discuss them and please comment or ask questions as I go through them. So I'll, I'll share my screen on this one. So excuse me, I tidy up my screen. Okay, can everyone see that screen? Uh, can you make it bigger, like full screen? Is that so I was going to take each of these in turn and explain them. So you like okay. that? Yep. Okay, so this first example, um, in no particular order, is an example of a project risk management uh, exercise. Um, you and you'll more can you zoom in a little zoom a bit more yeah a little bit more yeah how's that is that better that's perfect that's perfect yes. okay um so this is uh, as i've shown examples this is uh, a consequence scale against the, this organization was called acpl uh the objectives of the program the milestones, the budget, health and safety, and public standing. So we came up with a, a consequence matrix that covered these aspects of their objectives. They had to be safe. They have to meet their budget requirements. They have to meet their program. They have to meet the objective <laughs> of the program, et cetera. And we had a scale of likelihood so this was the chance that something would occur during the program. So it didn't matter how long the program was, whether it was one year or two years, what was the chance of an mm -hmm. event occurring during the program? And we also looked at how effective mitigations would be so we could scale the mitigations. We had a matrix, which everyone agreed to. So this is an example of selecting consequences based on a project or a program. What is the chance of a program not being successful, not meeting its objectives? So that I thought was perhaps useful because we haven't talked much about projects. This is another example actually of a project, but you'll see it's, this is a risk matrix. Can everyone see that clearly? It's a little bit small. Is that better? Yeah. So the project 37, it was just called project 37. Um, it was a civil project. Um, 
it's still small. <laughs> okay. So I, I guess the important point is we identified a risk. We called it an issue, just summarized it. In this case, unident undefined financial success criteria. When detailed for cause, is that better? The cause of a risk, the rationale for a project has developed over an extended time and the ownership of a project has moved to a new entity as part of a larger change. So it was a very uncertain environment in which the project was being carried out and people weren't clear what they were trying to achieve. And so it was rated very high. So the management plan was to seek dialogue with stakeholders and develop a common understanding of the opportunities to help sell the project, to explain the project. And, but even with that, it was still considered high risk. And then it says there's more to this one, so there's more issues. So that's a, an example of a real risk where the project hadn't gone well. We were called in to help manage the risks. And the first thing we said, well, no one really knows what they're trying to achieve. No one quite knows what success looks like. So how can we possibly be have a successful project and this went on financial social success functional criteria this was a, a classic example of unclear objectives uh, of the project and therefore uh, there's a saying if you don't know where you're going you might end up someplace else uh, <laughs> you'll end up somewhere but you don't know if you've ended up in the right place so is it like I say is a real project we were asked to help with and we set out to try and identify our risks and the first thing he said is you don't know what your objectives are that's a risk so um, I thought that was quite interesting the example okay this here is a real uh, risk uh, report for an airline it was Air New Zealand, but it's a very old one, so I don't think anyone will mind me sharing this one. Um, it's many years old, but I thought it was a good example. You see, 2004, so very old, long time ago. Group risk profile. Um, all these executives, they've all moved on. They're, they're no longer with the airline. But um, this is an example just to show that the risk department, internal audit risk department, set out to identify the strategic risks, the high level risks of the organization and report them to the board. So we called it the group risk profile. And we set, we define definition of risk, for example, risk is any threat, lost opportunity or circumstance could compromise the safety and security of our customers and staff or the effect of financial sustainability of a group or the strength of a group's brand. So we were very clear, what exactly do we mean by risk? And we looked at the group's objectives and defined risk. We then, so this is all an introduction, and then set out what the high risks were, et cetera. But for each risk, I'll just bring one up. We talked about each risk in some detail. There was a risk about communicating monitoring group strategy. And we rated it as significant, but stable. And then we mapped it to a risk matrix. And we said, there's a number of strategy risks that we need to mitigate. And then they're tending, they're moving, they're dynamic, and they're moving, tending to go higher risk. So we talked about what's causing these risks, what the impacts would be, and a proposed mitigation and practices. So the reason I'm showing you this one is to show that you can have a risk register with risks listed on them, and you can have quite a lot of detail in the risk register. But sometimes risks are so important and so complex and multifaceted that you need to have a proper report 
that really explains and explores a risk so that the senior team can really understand it and, and work out the strategies, strategies to address the risk. So risk management is more than just writing a risk register and reporting that a risk is high or low. It's about really understanding some risks, really getting under the, under the skin um, and exploring what exactly is driving a risk and what are we going to do about it. So that's just an example. Okay, this next example is of an example of a very advanced of analytical risk, a very complex technical risk. Um, and what we were interested in this case was whether obstacle lights should be fitted to the mountains around Queenstown Airport. You may not be able to see that that's Queenstown Airport at night with the lights. Before it was able to fly, we could fly in at night. And the question was, the regulator wanted obstacle lights fitted on the mountains. But the airlines was, were concerned they may create more hazard than they were trying to solve. It was a very complex human factors, technical analysis had to be done. I should remark this mountain here is only 200 meters, 200 meters to the right of a flight path. Um, so it is a very challenging airport. And so we were asked to help to understand these risks and carried out very detailed analysis, workshops with four airlines in the room, wrote a lot of technical detail, explained the problem, the flight paths, the approaches, and then looked at the human factors, looked at human behavior using the, what's called the loop, uh, odor loop, um, and how people think, how pilots think at speed. And then we applied the risk management process. This is, you'll recognize this diagram. Very simple, the blue one I showed you is the same diagram. And then we built a risk matrix, the likelihood, for example, critical expected to lead to a future accident. Or we also looked at a positive side, expect to prevent an accident. And then started to rate risks on different approaches and departure paths. Looked at the human factors, different ways that humans could, could respond to different circumstances. And then started to think, well, if we've got a bunch of risks, what's the overall effect on risk of different uh, solutions? And what would prevent the accidents? So the reason I'm showing you this, here's the airlines involved, Air New Zealand Airways, Jetstar, Virgin, is just to show that some risks are so complicated, so technically advanced, that simply doing a risk matrix isn't sufficient. You need to get experts from all sorts of fields and set go through a very complex process to really understand the complex risks. It's not common. And as I said yesterday, you can do your risk analysis at quite a high level initially to identify what ones you should concentrate on and put more resources into. And very occasionally you'll come across a risk that is very complex and you need to put very specialist resources into understanding it. And I suppose the lesson from this is no one answer to understanding risks. You have to firstly understand an overall level of risk, identify where you've got areas concerned, do some more work, and from time to time, there'll be a very complex problem to solve. And you have to be prepared to put time and effort into really understanding it. So in this case, we were trying to, we were concerned that the regulator was pushing us in the wrong direction. And so we really need to understand this risk. We, we I meant all the airlines, all the airlines. 
would anyone like to comment on that? No, okay. Um, this here is another. Um, Another risk, so I'll try and make it big enough for you to see. Um, okay, a real one again. Um, or it's actually the same project in a way, in that it's to do with trying to fly into Queenstown at night, and this is a Jetstar. Um, we worked with Jetstar to help them with what they call their operator safety case. Um, and so again, an example of quite a complex um, risk assessment. And here we used uh, a format that they asked us to use, this layout. This, so this was a Jetstar said, we would like to do it this way. So we helped them do it this way. So we describe and understand the risk. So in this side, safety of flight, adverse wind conditions. Determine the raw level of risk. So we did a, said it was extreme. Understand the existing flight controls. Then determine the level of night flight risk considering the existing controls. So if we just simply started fly at night, what would the level of it, given the current controls or the level of risk? Decide what to do to further manage the risk. So this said, no, we're not happy with this. This is not as low as reasonably practicable. We must treat this risk. So what additional action to take? So for example, widen the runway, fit centerline lights to the runway, additional human factors train, for example. So these are all things that were done. And then we re-rated the risk, assuming these mitigations were all in place. And we came up in this case with a low level of risk. And are we comfortable? Is this as low as reasonably practicable? Yes. So that's a real, this is a real project. Um, and that was just looking at a threshold to touchdown and landing roll of a phase of flight. And we went through and we looked at all these different hazards and we looked at takeoff departure, for example. Um, we looked at decision point or decision altitude to the threshold. So as you can see, a lot of work. Um, each risk just following the standard risk process. Raw risk, is it good enough? No, yes. What additional mitigations? Is it good enough? Or is it low or high? Can we do more? Um, and as you can see, um, they wanted this job done properly. Um, there's a lot of risks there. Um, outstanding pilots um, leading this project from their side. Um, yeah, so perhaps another example that this was a very challenging project. Uh, it needed a lot of detail, but we didn't go into that level of analysis that I showed you before. So um, each time using the right risk tools for the project, for the type of risk we were concerned with. Uh, anyone want to comment on that? Perhaps the operational people? Uh, just um, a question. Um, I want to know the uh, how you can uh, reduce the level of risk. For example, with some of the safety events uh, of the Chester, uh, how you um, decide after the mit mit mitigation is come from a high risk level five to mm. a low level. Mm. That's a very uh, uh, difficult. Uh, to to assess the, the level mm. of risk. Mm. That's yeah, my that, question. Yeah, no, it's a very good question. Um, my argument is you do your research and you find the data. And I've got another example where we did a lot of 
research on global incidents. In this case, uh, we used the professional judgment of very experienced pilots who, one in particular, um, Ross Denistein is his name. Um, he actually moved to New Zealand so he could fly this approach again and again and again to really get to know the conditions. This is in daytime. So he became real expert at how the aircraft performed on this approach. And so he was in the room as we worked our way through these, these risks, not just himself. And then my job as a facilitator was to challenge. So everyone say in the room would all agree, oh yeah, we agree, it's likely, unlikely. I mean, I'd say, well, be sure. What about that incident? What about that airport? And really get people to question themselves before, yes, we're comfortable, we think we've got this right. So I think the, the role of a facilitator in a risk workshop is really important. And sometimes, so sometimes I can think I've been in rooms with, I don't know, 20 pilots. And they're all agreeing with each other. And I, and I don't fly jet airliners. And I say, guys, are you really sure? This doesn't sound right to me. And sometimes I agree, oh, maybe you're right. And then have another discussion and come to a different conclusion. Uh, so that facilitation role is really important um, to not say, tell people they're wrong, but to get them to reflect on their judgment. Um, and sometimes you have to agree, we don't have enough information. We'll go and do some more research and come back and discuss this again. Mm. But so sometimes it's purely professional judgment. Sometimes it's professional judgment informed by data. And sometimes it's pure data. Mm. Does that help? Yes. Um... I can understand your explanation, mm. but uh, actually, it's, it's really hard to uh, to def, uh, to identify exactly um, mm. because uh, the own of the opinions in uh, pilots. So the uh, it mean for this, for example, the list of the uh, the. The, the risk assessment of the Chester is come from the, the roof of the experienced pilots. Mm. Then the is some some uh, uh, something is not from the data. Maybe this maybe from the uh, safety uh, uh, event uh, data from uh, aircraft mm. and uh, experienced pilots. So mm. the it mean this list always. Uh, it's not not really uh, uh, correct uh, mm. for for the risk uh, level. Yeah. Um, firstly, have you got all the risks? And secondly, have you rated it correctly? I should remark that this was a in total a four year project. We started by doing uh, a lot of analysis of global accidents at night. So we took like the American data and we examined the difference between night and daytime um, risk levels. Uh, we created visualizations of the runway with different lighting patterns, etc. So there's a lot of technical analysis done before um, carrying out this analysis. So it, it there was a lot to help us on the way to give us confidence that we were probably going to get all the risks and we were probably going to judge them. We would judge them with the help of a lot of analysis done beforehand. Mm. But, but you're right, this, is, this can be very difficult. And I can think of one example. It's really interesting. It was a safety committee meeting. Chief pilot, fleet managers, safety department, engineering, and we're all debating various risks and the level of safety. And we had two observers in a room and one was actually a 
board member of a company who happened to fly his own aircraft. Um, and at the end, we were all very pleased with ourselves. We thought the risks are good. Yeah, you know, we got more managed. And he said, gentlemen, I think you should all look at yourselves. And he walked out. And what he was saying is, I think you have all become too confident, too self-confident. Uh, and it was a real shock to us that we thought we were doing so well. And this observer told us that maybe we were too confident. And I think it was a very well-timed reminder that confidence can become complacency very quickly. Um, so yes, uh, I suppose you should always question, have we got this right? Are we too confident? Are we uh, even overrating risk? But have we got everything? Constantly questioning ourselves. Have we got this right? Mm. But I think the point is, Greg, you have to be careful. This is quite hard. This is hard stuff to get all the risks, mm. which I think is why, as professionals, we should maintain an awareness of what's happening elsewhere. Keep up to date with trends in the industry, accident reports from elsewhere, um, read your professional um, um, magazines and the like. Does that uh, sort of answer your 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 point? Um, yes, I, I got your point. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone else would, would like to say something? That's really really key point that's coming out here is um, always question yourself. Always question. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and another example, oh, this is an, uh, what is this? This is an airport, Wor works on a runway and shorten runway operations, that was it. Um, and so let's have a look, provisional aeronautical risk assessment. Can you make uh, yeah, I see if I can. I suppose the detail is less important than to say you'll see the layout. The layout is okay. if we've got a risk, a type of risk. We've identified a, an event that could happen. So we're saying pre changeover risks, markings on the runway, temporary one way markings painted in advance, threshold markings and scent line. The potential impact is non-standard paint markings on runway leading to pilot confusion and possible unstable approach or potential runway overrun. Notes, temporary run markings are 1.1 kilometers from existing threshold. We have PAPI's the visual guidance and electronic guidance. So we rated it. The mitigation actions was issue a NOTAM that explains a marking and then have a schedule of how to mark a runway because there was very little time to paint and it could be raining so you couldn't paint it and decide if that was acceptable or were there more actions that could be undertaken uh, and then so that was before the changeover after the changeover um, and then changing back to full length runway so just another example of an aviation risk register where a reasonable level of detail uh, using a semi-quantitative analysis to determine if it was a risk was acceptable or otherwise. Just seeing if there's a matrix here and here's our matrix. And okay, two more. It's a sim same project actually. Um, this became a very. We thought this would be easy project. 
everyone shortens their runways. That's not a problem. But then we looked at the data around the world and we were surprised at how many incidents were caused by shortened runways. Uh, Perth Airport, for example, had had five near misses in one week. Uh, there had been an aircraft lost in the United States. Um, and so we realized actually it wasn't a simple problem. And we even had so many mitigations to manage, but we had to have this simple plan to manage the mitigations, to keep up to date with exactly all the things we had to do before we were comfortable to carry out the project. This is just a list of mitigations. Um, it was a really surprising uh, project and um, it just illustrates that sometimes these things are very complicated and but you need to do you may have a lot of people involved a lot of stakeholders each with different parts of a problem to solve in this case we had flight crew we had a regulator we had the airport we had chart uh, companies um, programming aircraft all sorts of issues to solve uh, air traffic control training etc and this here is a report uh, on one particular risk for that very project at the very beginning where we did the analysis and summarized the risks, explained the process we'd been through, showed an example of runway accident. This was San Francisco, explained the problem for the pilots and the aircraft and the change in technology and how that was affecting the risk, and then had to report it to the senior leadership team of the airport. And this is the way we tried to communicate that risk. What we said was if you carried away this project as planned, this year, the year of a project, you will probably, sorry, probably have a moderate incident. So you'll probably have go arounds, aborted landings, etc. But you may have, you may lose an aircraft. That is conceivable. It has happened in the past. We've identified many risks. The bottom, the final message was, do not carry out this project this year. We've got too much to do to make it a safe project. So it was postponed for 12 months. Um, whilst all the stakeholders sorted, understood the risk and mitigated their part of the risk. So I think this is quite interesting in that we used a very simple matrix. This is a matrix of the airport company, but had to explain there was uncertainty what would happen, but the worst case could reasonably be expected to occur. Um, and this was a senior team who were not essentially aviators. Um, most of these people were commercial people who were running an airport. Um, they had very little technical knowledge. Um, so we had to try and communicate um, this level of risk without um, appearing to be overly cautious. Um, they made the decision very quickly. I said, okay, we'll postpone my project for a year. So, um, any comments on that? This is an example of our worst case and problem that we talked about yesterday. And someone asked a question about, this was a problem, this was the worst case. Okay, so they were examples I've, I've put up. Um, hopefully that was of interest to people. Um, I'm thinking with hindsight, maybe I've put up too many complicated examples where they don't all have to be complicated. They can be fairly straightforward. But I 
think the point is that sometimes risks are complicated and need a lot of work. And so you should be prepared to, to set that aside and get the right people focused on that problem. Um, where normally most risks you can just manage within your department with any specialist knowledge and just use self-evident mitigation strategies. Okay, a any, other, any other comments on that? No, we don't have any. Oh, okay. I, I should remark, obviously, this is my field. So I'm, I'm, I have no problem finding these examples, but clearly for most people, you wouldn't get involved in so many complicated projects um, yourselves. But, but I suppose be aware that, that sometimes it's necessary to become quite, use quite advanced techniques, but not always. Most of the time, it's not necessary. You can just do a simple risk matrix and work your way through self-evident mitigations. Okay. So I stop sharing my blank screen, my untidy, untidy desktop. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just looking at time. It's just about Break time, isn't it? On, have I got that right? Yes. yes. So um, after the break, uh, what I'm proposing, shall I, shall I share my screen again? Oh, yes. oh, sorry, let's find right. Okay, um, so after a break, I'll, I'll go through a briefing for a risk identification and assessment exercise. We can form up in groups and then go through a process to identify and assess in three risks. And then when each group has completed their exercise, we'll go through each and discuss the risks that each group has identified. Okay, so does that sound what I think we should do after a break? I'll yeah. start by the briefing and then we'll break up into groups and we'll go through an exercise. It should take us to, to lunchtime. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so 15 minutes break. We come back at 10.40. So it should be... Uh, yeah. Four forty for you. <laughs> uh, we turn back at ten forty. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Ten forty. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll share my. Ah, you know what? If they don't, I can share again on the chat box, so everyone would would know. So okay. the discussion you need the pack two is that correct? Pack two, that's okay. right. I will yeah. share once again on the chat box. Yes, that is doable. Okay, excellent. So you can start. Uh, um, yeah, with a briefing. Okay. Uh, Welcome back, everyone. Um, I'll share my screen. Just a minute. Let's stop to. Okay. Hopefully, everyone can see a slide. Yeah. Next up, identify and assess in risks. Um, so I'm going to, um, this is now an exercise. It will take us a little while to get ready, I think, but I'll brief on what, what the idea is and we'll form up in the groups, but we'll need some information 
to work with, and I'll go through that as well. And the idea is to identify and assess a total of three risks. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Maybe we'll stop after one or two. Um, but the idea is to go through the process of identifying and assessing the risk, and then we'll discuss what each group has prepared. Uh, now, everyone's going to need access to some scales and uh, consequence scales, likelihood scale, and a matrix that are is in pack number two. Yes. Uh, I will resend pack number two. Okay. Um, pack two đã được gửi cho mọi người qua uh, email ạ. Nếu mà không ai có, nếu mà không vào được email thì em gửi luôn vào cái chat box này đây. Mọi người có thể download xuống. Pack two. So pack two looks like what I have on the screen. Yes, I just sent it in on the chat box. So yes, everyone okay. can if they need. Yes. So. Um, in that slide, on slide number three, the second one after the title slide, is a suggested uh, consequence matrix for Vietnam Airline. Sorry. Um, and as consequence ratings for operational safety, aviation compliance, personnel safety, business compliance, financial band reputation, customer service and environmental. So whatever risk you identify, you should be able to rate it against one of these. Um, and then we have a scale insignificant through the catastrophic and this describes what each scale means. Now I appreciate this is probably too small to read. So each next slide has I didn't in uh, more easily read. So the first two are on the first slide, the next two categories are on the next slide. So categories five and six are on the next slide and the last two on the following slide. So you should be able to read that on your browser or chat box. Um, and use the idea is to use the type of impact that matches the type of risk that you're interested in, that you've identified. Also in a pack is a probability scale. Almost certain through to conceivable only and a likelihood of it occurring daily, weekly, monthly, once a decade, etc. And a matrix. So when you identify a risk, you identify the consequence level and the likelihood of it occurring, and you can rate your risk. So that's the information you need to work with. So that's in slide pack two. And then also in slide pack two is a risk mate, uh, sorry a risk register like this. Um, so the idea is to describe your risk, rate it, propose a mitigation and re-rate it. Okay, and you can do it on paper, however you want to do it. Um, and then once each group has, I think once each group has identified one risk, we can come back, discuss it, each risk in turn, uh, and the idea is not to have a right or wrong answer, but just to discuss what the risk was, why it was rated, why it was. Do other people have some views on it? Do you agree with the rating, et cetera? And then we'll plot, after that, we'll plot them on the matrix. So hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Just a clarifying question. So the risk is each group will identify their own risk. Is that correct? That's right. So in discuss between themselves, choose a risk, and then as a group, use the matrix, 
use for consequence scale, use for probability scale, and rate for raw risk. Then debate what you could do about it, what mitigations, and then rate it again. Yes. How long okay. does each group have for this? How long would you like each group to have? Um, maybe we could say 25 minutes. Okay. 25 to 30? Yes. 25 to 30? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, may anh ở đây có thể vào Zoom được không ạ? Uh, let me explain a little bit um, to mm -hmm. the participants. Um, uh, bây giờ bọn em đã chia nhóm ạ. Mỗi nhóm thì bọn, khi mà vào Zoom ạ, hoặc là những anh chị nào online thì không có gì đâu ạ. Um, trong Vietnam Airlines thì có thể rất là nhiều risk ở đây mọi người đã nói luôn rồi ví dụ như là training này like of employee hoặc rất là bất kỳ vấn đề gì ạ thì như thầy đã nói thì là chúng ta sẽ trên cái scale uh, xanh đỏ ấy, thì sẽ xem ra là cái mức độ risk của chúng hiện tại đang ở đâu đang ở mức độ nào uh, sau khi đấy thì chúng ta sẽ có một số dạ, uh, thì nhóm sẽ thảo luận với nhau và sẽ tìm được giải pháp cho cái risk đấy và sau khi nếu mà áp dụng được giải pháp đấy thì cái lại xét lại xem mức độ của risk đang ở đâu rồi nó vẫn còn màu đỏ hay không hay là nó xuống màu xanh hay là xuống màu vàng hay cái gì đó thì chúng ta sẽ có khoảng 25 đến 30 phút để nói chuyện với nhau và nhóm <cười> và nhóm xong rồi là chúng ta sẽ quay lại lớp để thảo luận sau <cười> ok mọi người hiểu hết không ạ nếu mọi người hiểu thì em sẽ nhấn nút và tất cả mọi người sẽ tự vào nhóm của nhau vì mọi em đã chia sẵn rồi Okay, yeah. so Mr. Duran, I already explained to the participants uh, what we're going to do with the discussions. So now I'm going to press the break room button and we will move Mr. Duran from one group to another just to see, um, just to listen to the discussions and if you have any comments or directions for that group. Okay. Okay, Chia. Okay. Uh, Okay. chưa roi vào ạ cho vào nhóm hai trước vào ok Joran I just assign you to a group so please click join you able to join yes
still trying to get used to these rooms. Um, Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yes. Have you joined the group? I joined one. I left it because I wasn't. Uh, I was still trying to get used to the groups. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why yeah. I think so, just just you know wait for them for a few minutes because they're gonna discuss and then we can jump inside. Okay. So I, I now have a list of all the people in the groups. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Um. I see. Yeah. I move to move to. So can I choose a group to join or? Yes, of course. How do I do that? Uh, uh, you go into more and then you go into breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. Then you have, you know, the five groups and then you can join, click into each group. All right, I simply group, click a group and I'll join it. Okay. Correct, yes. Okay. And then you can leave the group. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. And I assume that each group has got a leader, have they? Oh. Uh, I do believe they, they uh, you know, they discuss together and then they're going to select a leaders. Yeah, right. I will do okay. a podcast message. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the group, for example, they wonder what is our, you know, the, the still, they still very confused with the questions. So okay. to be honest, but that the one, you know, on the list of the, the scale for Vietnam Airlines suggests they pick a topic that they concern and then they evaluate it. Correct. Um, they, they had think of a risk and then think which which impact scale do they want to use do mm -hmm. they want to use financial do they want to use safety yeah do they want to use brand mm. yeah. yeah if if they find it too difficult then maybe we could go and if they do find it difficult <coughs> Thầy đang ở bên ngoài và sẽ chăm vào sau. Đây, đây, đây. Jiran, do you want mm -hmm. to just go into each group and, and you know and explain and you know sure. just in case we need to monitor them anyway. I join yeah. you. Okay, yeah. I'll start in with group one and I'll work my way down. Yes, please. Thank you.
Hmm. So I'm trying to work out how to, here we go. Join.
so basically, I think we should keep them some time to discuss, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we can uh, come up with some ideas. So, uh, group number one is still discussing. If you want to come back, I can move you over there. Okay, yes. I just noticed group two SQD. Yes. yes. They, they already have a very advanced risk register. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, because it's SQD, so they do have that kind of example on hand. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they, they already knew about it, so they can yeah. explain to some of the other department. Um, I think that would, department, yeah. yeah. I think that would be very useful if we can get them to present their risk, yeah. perhaps first. Um, I'd be interested to know if what their scales they're using. Maybe mm -hmm. they can present them and we can discuss them as well. Mm. Yes, yes, mm. correct. Yep. Uh, it was only the first group that seemed to be struggling to get started, wasn't it? Yes. Do you yeah, want to jump? Mm, okay. Mm. Do you want to jump back or you want to, you know? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll jump back to what group one. Yep. Yep. I move you. Okay. Mm -mm. Yep, and we join group one as well. I move you. Group two and three seems really active. Good. Okay. Yeah. I'm not surprised too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Flight crew, flight crew always active. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, I will join some groups to see how they're doing. And okay. I'll be back. Yeah. Okay.
so we double check and then uh, some of the group they still think that uh, give them like five to ten minutes extra because yep. yep. they want to use the uh, you know the example putting in the table and the matrix as well no, that's good um as long as people are working that's good yep. yeah 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 i'm i'm doing some some further slides to mm. to help the discussion yeah. yes thank you yep.
Oh. Gerard? Mr. Gerard? Uh, we are back into the main um, Zoom. Okay. Okay, so this is what I have suggested for the groups to do. So actually, we only have 20 minutes to um, lunch break. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. I have already created something like this. So even if the group doesn't prepare the Excel, I can also type it in so everyone can see um, according to this chart, this matrix. Yes. Excellent. So we just go through um, all groups. So we actually we divide into five groups and whichever groups is ready to go first, I think they can go. Uh, there's not any order, whoever is ready. Dạ, có nhóm nào muốn đi trước không ạ? Chúng ta còn khoảng 20 phút nữa đến chưa chúng ta. Còn mấy nhóm tất cả nhỉ? Còn 5 nhóm ạ. 5 nhóm cơ. Thế thì nói trong mấy phút. À. Cứ nói đi chắc phải là qua trưa luôn, không nói hết được 5 nhóm trước trưa đâu ạ. Như vậy là mỗi nhóm có bao nhiêu phút trình bày ạ? Không giới hạn thì các thầy muốn để đây xong rồi là mọi người còn thảo luận với nhau nữa không? Nên là đi qua hết được những cái này như là risk là gì? Current risk này xong rồi là sau khi có mitigation là có nghĩa là đi hết những cái này được. Đấy, ít nhất có một nhóm thì trình bày một risk nếu mà nhóm nào 
chuẩn bị hơn một risk thì đã trình bày một đã Cơ như không có phần obtain objective à thì chỉ tên là risk nếu vâng. theo đấy theo Đúng. định nghĩa của thầy ấy, thì phải có objective chứ cuối cùng em làm gì phải có objective mà <cười> ok thì bọn okay. chị biết điền vào đâu ok mr john so they were asking so this is the chart that we proposed and they were asking about the objectives uh, yeah it, it's a very very good point perhaps if you could add a, a column and put the objective that okay. would be very good hmm. yes, yes. Vâng Tại sẽ em sẽ cho một cái objective. Thế thôi nhóm mình làm trước đi nhỉ cho nó xong còn ăn cơm. <cười> nhóm nào cũng được ạ. À? Nhóm nào ready thì có thể đi trước. Mặc dù bây giờ cũng chưa nghĩ ra tiếng Anh nhưng thôi cứ nói được đến đâu thì nói nhá. <cười> nói được đến đâu. <cười> em cũng biết đây là nhóm mấy đấy ạ? Nhóm 5. Nhóm mình nhóm 5 à? Mình không biết. Nhóm 5. Nhóm 5 à? Ok. So shall we uh, begin first? Ok. Yeah. Quân ơi, sao cái bảng của mình không giống với bảng này Quân ơi, nhóm 4, nhóm 4 Mà chị chỉ có một, một risk thôi em ạ, không cần về <cười> uh, so, uh, so, so can you hear me? Should I be the one to uh, begin first? So we are from the group 5 and... Uh, Our objective uh, is to uh, control or to ensure the um, the stability of the operation for the uh, service company. That means, uh, for example, here like the VS or yeah, yeah, service company op, uh, to offer service to uh, uh, allies. And uh, the risk here is the, um, the issues of the people uh, getting the COVID the staff who got mm -hmm. the virus yeah. Yeah, yeah so it might affect uh, uh, the operation the continue continuity and the um, the the quality of the service and uh, according to our team we think because of the situation of the uh, virus situation in vietnam at the moment uh, and we think that uh, this is the worst case that means is uh, the likelihood is uh, that the the frequency is uh, uh, is high and uh, the consequences uh, consequence is also major that means uh, we we consider is the uh, the worst case for the time being and uh, our uh, solutions we have discussed and have uh, around nearly 10 solutions so we We, we, we can uh, summarize it first. I mean, we, we divided uh, all the staff into maybe two or three uh, groups and we uh, used the 5K uh, procedures uh, in Vietnam. That means uh, even in the group, they try to uh, not contact to each other and yeah, to wear masks to mm -hmm. yeah, use all the uh, protective uh, 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 measures to, to prevent to connect to each other in the group and we also uh, when when we changed the the shift uh, of each team we try not to contact directly and we will um, use some electronic devices to uh, uh, it's like uh, when we when you switch uh, the uh, the team and uh, the third one is that we We try to use the stand, stand, standby team. That means uh, currently uh, there are some teams who uh, just serving, serving, uh, for example, Vietnam Airlines and some serving, the, uh, for example, uh, the chess or bamboo. But we try to um, educate and uh, and then uh, do some uh, measures to so that all these standby team can understand about the procedures of Vietnam Airlines or VHS so, so they can swap easily when uh, there is some team have the COVID. <laughs> And uh, we also apply the, uh, the uh, um, on-site measures. That means all the team have to uh, stay, work and live at the, uh, the, the place to, uh, to try to, for example, live for one month until, uh, and then we swap to another team. This is, I don't know, I don't know, don't remember exactly. Do you, 
any guy in the team know the ba tại chỗ là gì? Three, I don't, I don't remember the word, but it's like, uh, it's a line. Three at the same place. <laughs> yeah, we work at the same place, uh, stay, work and live uh, at the same place and we just swap inside the, the company without going and, outside, yeah. Mm, and uh, when we also consult, uh, the company will consult with the uh, doctors to ask about the, um, like the, um, exercise and um, uh, put uh, uh, the meals uh, that can uh, support the health of the staff and uh, to ensure that they have enough uh, health the health uh, and even if they got the virus they can come back to work uh, quickly as much as possible and mm, uh, and if we do all these processes and things still happen that we have many people got the virus we also think about the Uh, another uh, opportunity is that we will have to do the outsource, asking for others uh, ground handling service company to 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 um, uh, rent or uh, some other staffs from the other companies as well. And uh, in case of that, uh, because we we are aware that this is the risk uh, of the high risk, so we will work with the allies because uh, the allies they ask for the safety, the quality of the service, but we have to uh, ask them uh, which priority they choose. For example, if they say that safety is uh, their first priority, so we will put all our effort to ensure the safety, but uh, the quality of the service may reduce. And uh, yeah, the airline may accept because this is the, 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 uh, the situation happen in all the countries. So, I think that uh, we think that um, we have to discuss with the allies to choose the priority of the, the, the service uh, quality they, they may accept in case of uh, all the procedures we have applied but still happen. Mm. Yeah, and uh, uh, we also, in, in terms of our the, the staff list, we also divide the priorities of the, the, the importance of the jobs as well. So that they, we ensure that, for example, the first priority will always be guaranteed that we have enough staff and we can, uh, and it will level up to, in terms of the importance of the, the staff work or job. And uh, okay. so for the people who got the virus, when they come back to work, we also that uh, they may that may affect to uh, the quality of their service because of the health issues. So uh, we try to, um, to leave them to have more time to recover, if possible, if we still have enough, uh, enough staff. But in case if we don't have enough uh, staff to, uh, and they have to come back as uh, soon as possible, we, we also we think that we have to, dis as we say that we also come back to the airlines and to ask if, uh, If we ask them to do with the high frequencies uh, or pressures, that may lead to the, um, the safety issues. So does the ally accept that fight or does the ally accept the uh, issues that we, um, we will gradually um, increase the frequencies or the pressures for the staff and the quality of service may in some, in short term, maybe a little bit lower or something like that. So we have to discuss and we have to agree in the short term, maybe another uh, short term uh, agreement or something like that with the allies in the short term that uh, how they accept uh, the acceptance level of the ally in that case. So that is our solution. And uh, we, our team, we discuss, have discussed and we think that after we did all these measures, we still, because of the COVID is unpredictable. Uh, uh, and we, as far as we know that it still happened uh, in Vietnam at the moment. And uh, we think that uh, the issues or the risk is still in somehow is uh, like in the yellow color. It's, we cannot mitigate to, to the green. Yeah, because mm. it, yeah, mm. we think that this is our, our control. That means in terms of all what we have done, But the COVID is something that we cannot control. So mm -hmm. we think this is a kind of the, like the yellow color. This cannot be the green color at the moment. Mm 
yeah. Yeah. So this is our discussion. So các bạn trong team có bổ sung gì không nhỉ? This is uh, really interesting. It clearly, you've given us a, a lot of thought, as I'd expect. Um, can I firstly ask, you've yeah. rated likelihood and impact. Uh, you've said high for likelihood. Um, I, I yeah. think you mean likely, likely. Is that yeah. almost, almost certain? Yeah, certain, yeah. yeah certain, okay. Um, so you've got almost certain and major impact. Yeah. Um, which comes to an extreme risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really interesting. You've got a lot of uh, mitigations. But can I suggest some of the mitigations are mitigating service quality. Mm. Uh, others are mitigating safety. Um, Uh, the effect on safety of the of the staff. Yeah. Um, so maybe in this case, you've actually identified two or three risks. Yeah. The cause is the same, mm. but the impacts are different. One is the impact on safety. One is the impact on service quality. Service quality. Yeah. Yeah. So, in this case, I think this is a good example where you probably need two or even three rows in your risk matrix and you're rating the impacts in different ways, impact on safety, the impact on service quality separately. I do agree, but yeah. I think that this one has some kind of the trade-off, yeah, mm. between mm. this uh, threat. Because mm. if you want the safety, sometimes, of course, we, we can separate it, but sometimes it affects the other. Mm. Mm. This is a very good example of, I think, for the problems that airlines face now is um, where where is the priority um, being mindful that you've got safety of staff yeah you've got safety of flight yeah of, of the aircraft and you've got service quality so you've got three three different impacts yeah to to prioritize i guess mm. yeah um Yeah, this is really interesting. Uh, my, my my sense is you've actually got three risks here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because they'll each rate differently. Mm. If you mitigate by one measure, you will be uh, protecting staff, mm. but it won't affect the quality of service. The other might be a mitigation to improve quality of service, for example, outsourcing. So the effect of these mitigations differs depending on mm. what you're trying to protect. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Are, are you talking about crew or all staff? Staff. Staff across the business. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe you've got six risks in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Because you've got a flight crew. Yeah, right. You've yeah, got but, ground we, but crew. But we just narrow mm. down into, yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah. The And then you've got office workers. Um, I think it's a, it's a good example of just how complicated yeah. this is going to be. Um, yeah. Recovery from pandemic or managing a pandemic. Um, yeah, I think um, my, my advice would be to split this up mm. and maybe we do this after lunch. Yeah. We split it up and explore for different cohorts, different groups of people. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's a really good example of really thinking through lots of different possible mitigation measures. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think perhaps thinking about it, the probable case and worst case may be different for, for different, these different risks. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we also discuss about this because like for the safety of the staff, we think that uh, the likelihood is certain, but the impact is uh, sometimes moderate or something. We don't think it's a mm. major, yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, I think perhaps the other complexity is if you've got talking about crew, yeah, you've got the problem of um, currency training, qualifications, yeah. Yeah, right. Who's qualified on which aircraft? 
Yeah. Um, who's at what level in the crew? Who's a captain? Who's not? Yeah. A very right. complex problem it's, to it's solve. Much isn't more it? complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. This, this is a very good example, I think. Um, and I'm sure every airline <laughs> is facing is, it. Is, is yeah. Facing it. Mm. Yeah. This is probably a good example of where airlines working together may be useful. Yeah. Uh, if you have good colleagues in other airlines, is explore what is the best way. Well, how are you doing it? And how are we doing it? And yeah. Uh, the example I gave yesterday of Jets, uh, Qantas, and Air New Zealand working together on an operational problem, mm. even though they're competitors. Yeah. Mm. Because everyone wants to wants aviation to keep working well oh. and safely. Mm, very interesting one. Thank you. Thank you. Leah, Leah, Leah. Sorry, Leah. Okay. Call me Chan. Call me so, Chan. Yeah. Chan. Oh, thank yeah. you, Chan. Yeah. Okay, so uh, can we, uh, the next uh, group uh, start? Because we are very near the lunch time already. Yeah, uh, I was. And uh, our group, uh, we have the same uh, situation we choose at the first group. Uh, which group is this? I don't know. Number group three, three. Number, three, number three, number three. Okay. So, uh, objective of our the safety of our uh, guests, our passengers, and our uh, uh, staff also. Uh, so, can I just, this is flight crew, yes? Uh, we uh, want to uh, warranty the safety uh, of health of passengers and staff in the mm -hmm. area of uh, check-in area. We narrow, we narrow the, the area in the mm. check-in area. So uh, the same, the transmit of uh, COVID-19 in the check-in area, it is a risk. So the likelihood we uh, likely, yeah, the impact is uh, major. And this is the worst case too. Uh, we um, we have uh, the point of view a little bit uh, uh, different from uh, the first group. Mm -hmm. uh, we agree that uh, the the staff from the check-in staff is very important, and we agree on uh, the main uh, procedures or the. The first group uh, show uh, we agree that we have uh, followed the 5K, uh, but we concern about the passengers. So we need uh, the mitigation. Mitigation. We should have uh, the automatic uh, temperature measures should be installed at the airport, not in the personnel to take the measures of temperatures because this is one way to transmit the COVID-19 also. The first, uh, the second, we need to, uh, the more uh, uh, space for the passengers and for the staff to reduce the transmit, uh, the transmission of COVID-19 from passenger to passengers and from the passenger to uh, staff. More space, not spray. <laughs> space, space. Yeah, space. More space for passengers and staff in the check-in area. Okay. We have a lot of uh, method to increase the space for passengers. For example, we uh, uh, take a cure, a big, uh, bigger area for the cure and the longer. And we have, uh, for example, uh, in the check-in area, separate uh, along a uh, um, bigger uh, space for the cure, bigger space for the check-in counters. And uh, we use, uh, of course, the 5K 
meters to uh, protect our uh, staff from uh, getting COVID from the passenger too. So uh, the first we take is uh, 3B, uh, is the worst case, the 3B uh, in the high, um, high area of uh, the mm -hmm. uh, matrix of Vietnam Airlines. We su you uh, suggest, so we get it in the 3B level, is uh, likely in the extreme, uh, a little bit um, major. So and, this is uh, residual risk. Yeah. Mm. And uh, after mitigation, after mitigation, uh, the get more space, and we have uh, more space. That means we uh, increase the uh, online check in or phone check in to uh, mitigate the um, uh, contact of uh, passenger to the mm. staff uh, from the passenger to passenger also. And so that, that yeah. sounds very, very effective mitigation. Yeah. Mm. And uh, after mitigation, we agree that the uh, still uh, possible of uh, the light likelihood possible. And uh, C. Plus, uh, mm. yeah, the C. Yeah. And mm. we have uh, still in the yellow pass is uh, moderate consequences. Yeah, that's so, also. Yep. So that's medium, medium. Hmm. And we we'll begin with major and likely. Mm -hmm. Which is a high. Right. Likely is mean high. Yes, that's right. That was for our group, sir. Thank you very much for that. That's, um, I think that's perhaps a little easier to follow than the first one because you've narrowed the problem down to just the check-in area, um, where this first risk is is all all staff. Yeah. But, um, interesting. Yeah. Was there any disagreement about the rating, or did everyone tend to agree? Uh, I have some more in mitigations uh, when I'm alive than in, uh, in, uh, in several times. Um, uh, mitigation, I, I think uh, in when I'm alive, it's incorrect uh, passenger use a mobile check-in and QO check-in for, 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 for this. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Jiran, I'm, uh, I'm in the group three as well. Um, like you said, in the, in, uh, uh, like you command uh, for the first group, so uh, you can divide for, uh, let's say, uh, this is the uh, affecting of the service and the quality the, during the checking uh, counter. Mm. Um, now you want to a uh, uh, little bit uh, more detail uh, about the safety because uh, um, if we uh, let's say uh, <clears throat> the first step we we uh, the the passenger go to checking right and then you got uh, some question about you know like the dance not good uh, we call DZR checking if we miss the information about DZR checking of, of course it's the first layer the second layer we got the um, uh, the bucket where we go through the uh, the screen uh, security screen, uh, and then they can find out you know, some you know DZR, and then they can you know put it out. Uh, let's say the passenger can check in the um, like the battery uh, ride battery, uh, for example. So here the uh, the effective of safety risk title is the DZR missing information. Uh, mm. We can mm. we can edit on uh, in the same uh, risk here. And uh, we can put in level five, for example, likelihood quite lightly, and then uh, mitigation. It be, uh, so we can uh, say uh, coordinate uh, closely with, you know, like security check uh, or something like that. 
Is it uh, what you say you mean in the first group? Mm. Can I ask what 5K measures are, me method? Well, 5K is just uh, something like uh, you can clean by your uh, clean hand, uh, okay. wearing mask, wearing or mask. keep the distance and distance. something like that. Nothing about, you know, about a security, you know, checking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a public health measures, 5K. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, we uh, demand uh, green pass. We so that green is pass and so uh, vaccinated two, vaccinated uh, yeah okay. two vaccinated and mm -hmm. uh, uh, test of uh, negative of test uh, by mm -hmm. COVID. so that's thing we actually uh, happen in the vietnam airlines mm. uh, yeah that's all i think mm. uh, and uh, thank you thank you <laughs> thank you my 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 concern is uh, can we aid together like the safety part in the same form like we decrying like this sorry um what was the concern uh about the safety about safety title let's say the risk here is the transmission of covid-19 mm. Mm. And the second pass, we can write below it about a deceptive, you know, the uh, yeah. like, you, like you mentioned in the first part, uh, first group. So about, uh, we declare about, you know, the service and the mm. quality. And the second line is the, about the safety and the effective of safety. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think in each case, putting the objective as a first column is really useful because you can split it up so the objective is quality of service. The objective is safety. The objective is a schedule, maintaining schedule, for example. So I think that adding that objective column has been really useful because that allows us to then break the risks down into exactly what it is you're trying to mitigate. Is it for mitigate for safety or is it to mitigate for quality or is it to mitigate for schedule, for example? Hmm. For example, before when checking counter, the staff can uh, like uh, face to face or avoid contact with the passenger, and they can find out you know the uh, at least uh, somehow they can find out you know who the passenger one really want to fly, or hmm. uh, some passenger they 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 you know they try to they, for example uh, they try to buy you know very high. Um, uh, insurance, and then they, they want to, uh, to want to kill themselves, you know, during the flight, like high check or for, for something. So at least at the checking counter, somehow, you know, they, they nervous or somehow they, uh, they, uh, you know, the, the staff can, can find out the, um, uh, you know, um, mm. the feeling, you know, I mean, uh, so they can, some, um uh, minimize the, the risky during the fly uh, for the high check for example so we, now they're wearing the mask because of the covid and you know they're not face contact you know and or even not eyes contact because they keep the distance for during the checking so what the effective of the safety uh, what i mean hmm. Hmm. interesting uh, i'm interested that um you're rating these risks quite high, even though you've got a 5K measures in place. So everyone is vaccinated. Everyone is washing their hands. Everyone's wearing masks. Everyone's been tested. Do you think these ratings are correct? Do you think the rating risk is really high, that high? Yeah, I think so. I okay. think so, it's especially mm. uh, the, the new... Uh, uh microcron or something so it mm. even is higher so mm. let's say we, we give it uh we uh we race at the worst scenario okay this is really interesting debate thank you very much for this everyone um i think you've really got into this exercise this is really good i'm made mindful it's now lunchtime <laughs> uh, <laughs> so sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> So, but there's, there's a few things to talk about here. And I think it'd be, if we go through the other groups after lunch, I mean, we'll come back and talk through some of the, some of the issues here, if I may. Okay. Yeah. Can we do that?
Yes, that sounds yeah. perfect. Um, so we will now have an hour and a half for lunch break. We'll come back at 1.40 for us. So yes, uh, yes, 1.40 for us. So 7.40 for you, is that correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. 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 Thank you, everyone. See you after lunch. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <coughs>